How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that was actually inspired by one of my friends who posted a question on Instagram stories. So about two to three weeks ago, a friend of mine on Instagram stories posted a question on why does most plastic surgeons use the forearm skin graft to construct a penis when patients undergo phalloplasties. If you don't know what a phalloplasty is, it's a procedure that often people who have had penile trauma or transmasculine people who want to reconstruct their original genitalia to more closely resemble a penis undergo for gender affirmation. And to construct the shaft of the penis, you need skin. So people are drag racing outside. <laughs> As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, um, you need skin to construct the shaft of the penis. So that skin has to come from somewhere, unfortunately, to... Pr now my cat's going crazy. <laughs> that skin has to come from somewhere and usually it has to be you because of the fact that if we are to use another donor skin, there is a risk of rejecting the skin graft from someone else from your own bodies, similar to organ transplants and things like that. So it's very, very important to get your own skin to be part of the skin graft to lessen any risk of having a rejection. But for most surgeons, they really like using the forearm skin to create the skin graft for the phalloplasty and when I saw my friend post that question I actually humbled myself a little bit because I um, I often pride myself in knowing, knowing about a lot about trans health and trans surgical procedures but I actually didn't know the answer to that question so I did my own research I looked up why the forearm skin graft is one of the most preferable skin grafts when it comes to phalloplasties and I'm going to be explaining it to you and uh, sharing this with my friend. <laughs> so when constructing the shaft of a penis in a phalloplasty, there are three really important things that one has to try and achieve, especially from the surgeon's side, so that your patient can get the most satisfaction out of their procedure. So number one is vascularity, which means how many vessels are in that graft. The penis has a lot of blood vessels. So you can only get the graft from a place in your body that has a lot of blood vessels. Number two is sensitivity. How much nerves are in that graft? The penis, again, is a very, very sensitive part of the body. So there's a lot of nerves in it. So you can only get the graft from places that has a lot of nerves. And the third is the shape the texture, the thickness, the elasticity of the skin. So the graft has to be able to be pliable. So you can shape it into the shape of a cylindrical penis and use it as part of the graft. So I found out in my research that the forearm is not the only place to meet all those three requirements for a skin graft for a phalloplasty. There's, other, there's, there's two other major areas where you can get grafts from and I'll be telling you why most prefer after learning about the three major ways you can get the graft why most prefer the forearm skin graft because it is ultimately up to the patient's choice in addition to getting a skin graft from your forearm you can also get a graft from the anterior thigh skin and also from the skin on your lats muscles right here so why is it that the abdominal and the lats skin grafts why are they less common than the forearm skin graft especially because both of those grafts tend to be easily coverable if you are worried about people looking at your scars and asking unnecessary questions because the forearm is pretty visible on an everyday basis so with the graft that uses the skin on top of your thighs that actually allows the surgeon to make a bigger size of the shaft, which is preferable for a lot of people if they are prioritizing it. Also, there's a lot of sensation nerves over there in the top of the thigh, which can give some sensation to your new constructed penis. However, compared to the forearm, sometimes those nerves don't always 
get grafted well. It's much harder to graft those sensation nerves from the thigh. And sometimes the flap is so big from the thigh that it's a lot harder to construct to a measurable size, which makes surgery complications a little bit higher than the forearm skin. Even though the thigh skin is much more easier to hide than the forearm skin. Actually, comparatively to the rest of the body, the nerves on the arm are actually the most intense out of everywhere else in the body. That's why the forearm skin is incredibly preferable because the nerves that go down your arm is really extensive. I mean, in medical school, I had the worst time learning about something called the brachial plexus, which is a huge branch of nerves that start right here and travel down your arm and nowhere else in the body do we have that much intense nerve conduction and nerves going everywhere because we use our hands humans are uh, handsy creatures we like to use our hands to feel we use our hands to touch we use our hands for a lot of things so it makes sense that we have a ton of nerves in our hands compared to the rest of our body. When it comes to the skin on the lats, the major drawback is the fact that there's only a motor nerve that goes down, a major motor nerve that goes down the lats. Motor nerves, unfortunately, don't give you any form of sensation. So most people do not prefer the skin on the lats because there's no sensation nerves, so you won't have any sensation in your newly constructed penis. And one big major thing that not a lot of people talk about when it comes to the three different graft places and why the forearm skin is the most preferable is that when we test for vascularity, if enough blood flow is going to that area, the testing methods for each site is different and the cheapest is the one in, on the forearm. On the forearm, you, you do an exam that's at the bedside. The doctor can do it, even you can do it. It's called the Allen's test. It's where you take two fingers and you block the blood flow to the hand from the ulnar and radial artery. You block it for a couple of seconds, then you release one of the arteries and your arm becomes red, showing the physician that you do have good blood supply and then you test it on the radial artery as well, on the opposite artery. So it's a really, really easy test to make sure that you have enough blood flow going through that skin area that can be grafted well. Unfortunately, with the other two skin grafts, the abdominal and the latissimus dorsi skin grafts, you can't do such an easy, cheap, exam you have to get a ct scan and ct scans if you don't know range from three to seven thousand dollars depending on where you are so most people who are getting phalloplasties are already paying out of pocket for their phalloplasty in addition to having to paying to paying an extra five to seven thousand dollars is absolutely ridiculous so it just makes sense to prefer the forearm skin over everywhere else. So that's it for this video where I talk about why the forearm skin is the most used skin graft when it comes to phalloplasty procedures. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video. I hope that you will share this information with someone that may benefit from it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and the activism work that I do. I'm going to be speaking at a couple of events and universities in the next couple of months. So that's very exciting. And I'm currently going through my family medicine rotation in medical school right now. So I will see you on the next video. This is Ben.